I had lunch with Hillary Clinton. Really, that happened. I was on vacation on the Caribbean island of Anguilla, staying at this hotel. It's an odd mix of villas for rent that stand right next to big houses owned mostly by rich Americans. One day, several black SUVs arrived. Men in suits wearing earpieces got out. I asked another tourist, what's that about? Bill and Hillary Clinton may come to stay here, he said. We were on the beach at the time, and another tourist overheard us and said, no, it's not true, it's just a rumor, but a few days later, more Secret Service men arrived, and it became clear a former president was vacationing there. We tourists then wondered, are both Bill and Hillary going to be here? This was 2006, five years after Bill left office, ten years after his affairs with Monica and many others were revealed. Hillary stood by him. But Pundit said, It is a political marriage. A political partnership and a business. A political business marriage? So on the beach, people ask, Who is here? Is it Bill alone? Bill with Hillary or with someone else? We got our answer a few hours later. There they were, strolling down the beach. Holding hands, gasped one tourist. Is it just for show? Who knows, but they certainly acted as if they liked each other. So my brother-in-law invited them to lunch. Now, why did he think that they might accept? Because he's a successful investor who years before squandered some of his money on the Democratic Leadership Council. Its goal was to bring Democrats back to centrist economics. Bill and Hillary convinced him that they were responsible Democrats, and Bill sometimes was. So my brother-in-law helped Bill get elected by giving money. Money. You know how the Clintons are about money. Our lunch invitation was quickly accepted. We would meet at this beachfront restaurant. The Clintons didn't know that I would be there. At lunch, I sat next to Hillary. She was perfectly nice for a while. But being the provocateur that I am, I brought up a local controversy. Some Chinese workers were sleeping in containers like these, four workers to a container. They'd moved to Anguilla to do construction during a real estate boom. This is why we need regulation, Hillary told me. I pointed out that the workers were not slaves. They'd come voluntarily to Anguilla only because their alternatives in China must have been worse. Also, containers weren't totally horrible. Today, trendy Americans brag about living in refurbished shipping containers. Of course, the Chinese trailers weren't up to American standards, but the standards Hillary wants would have raised costs. That would eliminate opportunities. Then some of those workers would have never gotten the chance to leave China and try to raise their standard of living. Our well-intended rules often create nasty, unintended consequences. For example, after Western media complained that Bangladeshi workers were abused in sweatshops, many of these sweatshops closed. Good, said the critics, we stopped the abuse. But then Oxfam researchers were dismayed to learn that child workers who lost their jobs ended up on the streets, and some became prostitutes. Hillary replied, I heard about that study, but most regulation improves living conditions, zoning rules, affirmative action, licensing. She went on and on. She still does that. Americans need a raise. That's why we must raise the minimum wage. Let's guarantee equal pay for women. And so on and so on. Back at our lunch, I responded, well, I'm a libertarian, and I know who you are, she snapped. And we were off. I give her credit. She argued with me for a full half an hour. Finally, she had enough, and she just turned away from me, talked to others, and ignored me for the rest of the meal. Here's my point. Hillary's wish to regulate Chinese workers' sleeping arrangements is a symptom of a bad case of lawyer's disease. Like most politicians, she assumes problems are best solved with new rules. She doesn't notice that most new rules create new problems, worse problems. They kill jobs. They take away opportunity altogether. No, I don't want to live in one of these trailers, but by saying no one can, that prevents some people from improving their lives. In the late 1800s, many Americans lived in one-room homes made of grass and mud. Should that have been banned? 
in China today, millions try to live on a buck or two a day. Because the island of Anguilla does not have Hillary standard housing regulation, many Chinese people were able to come here. When this woman's family arrived, they had no money. But because they were able to